So a lot has been happening uh, in my life. It's a bit ironic really because in my last video on this channel I said business as usual and it turns out that it has not been business as usual by a long chalk. Um, for a number of years now my wife Mandy's been quite unwell uh, and at some times quite seriously unwell. Um, and what with this COVID-19 going on at the moment, you know, I, I was very um, surprised when we got a phone call uh, a few days ago. Uh, when was it? On the 6th of April. Um, she, was, she was scheduled to go in for a major heart operation. Uh, and then we got a letter uh, some time back saying that the operation had been cancelled due to uh, the current situation, COVID-19. And then out of the blue, on the, the 6th of April, uh, we had a phone call at midday to say, can, can you get Mandy into the Bristol Heart Institute for an operation? We can go ahead with it. So I think what's happened is that they've had, with the lockdown, there's been fewer people needing NHS care initially, and uh, they found that they could probably get her in and get her sorted. But also from the scans that they've had from her, they've been monitoring her over the last few uh, months. They know her situation was deteriorating and she was getting constant um, heart pain, um, possible uh, heart attack symptoms and that. And uh, they had to get her in because her aortic valve was failing. Anyway, uh, fast forward two days to the 8th of April. I think it was the 8th. So finally Mandy goes down into theatre at 0830 hours, eight, half past 8 in the morning uh, for her surgery. It's a very serious open heart surgery um, and she uh, spends from 8.30 in the morning until 5.30 in the evening uh, in the theatre and then moved on to intensive care unit. In the meantime, on that very same day, 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, my dear little dog Elsa, um, who's been suffering with cancer, I, I decide that her la that la the night before it was, that it was just too difficult for her, she was beginning to s struggle, and I decided that it was time to, um, to let her go, basically. Um, and I wasn't prepared to let her watch her deteriorate and start to suffer. At this point, she was just on the cusp, I think, of being uncomfortable. And I thought, if I wanted to keep her going, it'd be only for my own selfish interest to have, want to have the dog around. She wouldn't be enjoying that at all. So I took the decision um, to take her to our, our vet based in Farringdon, which is a little village, uh, sorry, a little market town, about 10 miles away. And uh, they made arrangements on because of the, the again this shutdown lockdown thing. They made arrangements so that I could be with her, and uh, I was able to hold her and uh, do all the things that you do when your loving pet is about to pass away. And, uh, and she passed away very peacefully and calmly in my arms, uh, with me um, sort of cuddling her and whispering uh, sweet sweet words to her. Really, you know. Um, yeah, a hard, a hard day. Mm. But now um, she's now in the garden. Uh, brought her back home again. And uh, we've got, I have a little dog, Jess. And uh, she's getting on now, but she's showing signs that she's missing Elsa. The two, <laughs> the two dogs never really got on together. They were both females, and um, they they were a bit of a problem at times. But as they got older, they seemed to tolerate each other more and more. And now that Alice has gone, Jess is really down. She's really gone down. Um, and so, uh, you know, she's getting all the love and affection now. Back on to Mandy. Uh, half past five, I bring up the intensive care unit. She's on... Um, uh, ventilator and cardio assistance 
uh, or cardio support I think they thought they called it and the uh, situation was um, uh, blood pressure was up and down and uh, it, it was a little bit grave to be honest with you the situation wasn't good the next day things got worse um, still on the ventilator um, still full cardio support uh, this time she's got consolidations in both her lungs uh, lungs not inflating properly um, they had to take her down to um, give her a CT scan to assess the situation um, and again the last update was this morning um, I'm glad to say she turned a corner they don't, the CT scan has revealed that there was no um, blood clot in, within the chest which they thought was what was causing the lung constriction but there's fluid on the lungs but it's not related to uh, pneumonia so they can drain that off um, she's still sedated when I last spoke they were going to remove that she's still intubated on full life support but they're going to remove the tubes at 10 o'clock 11 o'clock this morning so that's just passed now I, I ring up the ICU twice a day I don't want to overburden them I ring them at 9 every morning and I ring them at half past 5 every evening and then I relay information to my family and friends via Facebook I can't visit because of the lockdown so um, the only uh, access to information I get is via a telephone call to the nurse at ICU she could be in hospital for a week to two weeks more um, but when she comes home she's going to need a lot of looking after, a lot of care she's had very serious open heart surgery and um, she's still not out of the woods so keeping both my fingers crossed everything crossed prayers, karma, good thoughts, all that sort of stuff really uh, the last uh, two days has been horrendous, absolutely horrendous um, hell of a roller coaster um, eventually in our lives we do lose people, we do lose pets um, just unfortunate that it happened to me but the coincidence is of it happening both on the same day, Mandy undergoing her serious heart surgery and my dog passing away on the same day, um, it just completely overwhelmed me. I was um, just wiped out, absolutely, I pain, that's actual uh, pain from the emotions of what was going on and the, what was happening. But I dealt with it okay, you know, I'm dealing with it fine. Uh, and as time goes on, it's getting better, you know, so... Uh, I'm dealing with it fine. I've decided that it is going to change the future of how I work, how I view my work, how I view my life and my wife and family. Um, I, I'm going to want to spend more time with my wife now because I think I almost lost her yesterday uh, and it's brought home the true, uh, and she's only 53. Um, neither myself nor her have, have enjoyed the best of half over the years and I think I want to spend more time with my wife and my family quality time together so the only way I can do that is to reduce time spent in my workshop so I've been working hard lately but I think I've got to uh, rein that in and get a more effective balance it'll mean we have less money but I, I've no mortgage on my house, <coughs> I've no debts apart from the usual running costs of buying food and paying bills. So my knives, although they're not built in large numbers now, are going to build in, be built in even smaller numbers. Um, I'm going to continue with my knife making because as I say it is my main livelihood and uh, I do enjoy it and it's a business that I've grown into and the skill and the skills that I've acquired and um, I've got no option you know I've still got to continue working but I do need to spend more time with my wife especially over the next few uh, weeks and months but I haven't said that I have got a box of knives here that I've completed over the last uh, three weeks um, I've built at two classics for my friend Amanti. Amanti's from he's from the States. I think he's from New York. Uh, and uh, he sent me a box of Desert Ironwood blocks. <coughs> um, 
he didn't want anything for them. Uh, the knives he's bought off me in the past, he's paid over the odds for. Uh, he, he's been really gracious and kind, and really a good friend. Uh, um, and he asked um, if he could have a couple of classics, standard classics. So, you know, one. So I built them, and these are Amante's two knives here. So I can show you these. They're both in the desert ironwood that he um, he sent over, and he did choose two blocks originally. So I marked he marked them up, and I used those. So that's the first knife. Uh, it's a, got a darker handle to it. Um, it's got black G10 liners, mosaic pins, a tapered tang. So it's a beautiful knife. Very happy, and he he asked, could he could the grind come back a bit more to the uh, front of the scales? So I brought the grind back a bit more to the front of the scales for you. Um, that's the first knife for a manti. The next one, it's again the same design with uh, yellow stitching on the on the sheath. It's got a slightly lighter handle. Again, black liners, tapered tang. Um, so that's the two knives I built from Manti and again I've brought the, uh, the grind back close to the scales. I've got a knife I built for um, Andy in uh, Australia. This is the one, uh, Andy was one of the guys that when I had a knife sale he, his email came in uh, just after the first email and so when I've been selling knives recently I've posted a knife for sale and generally I get half a dozen emails come in pretty damn quick almost at the same time and so if I've only got one or two knives to sell I'll sell it to the first couple of people in the line and then them that have come in afterwards I'll say that if you hang on a week or two I'll have another one ready and so Andy was in that category of people and this is um, the knife I've got for you Andy and you, you suggest, said that you would um, like a Massa Birch one, so I got this one in Massa Birch um, with leatherless bolts. Uh, it's got tapered tang, green G10 liners. So that one there is for you if you'd like it. Um, right hand sheath and dangler. I've got two more in here. Uh, this one, I know I've got, I can't, I can't remember the chap's name now. Uh, I'll have to uh, look on the computer. But this one's got a home to go to. Um, it's an interesting wood. It's, um, it's a maple. When you look at the scales to start off with, you, you think they're quite plain, but then when you look closely at them, there's all sorts of, um, there's all sorts of, uh, uh, shapes and patterns going on inside the wood. So it's a stabilised maple. They've all got tapered tangs these knives. G G10 and, uh, liners. This one's got the, uh, the mosaic pins. So that's that one. And, and finally I've got this last knife here. Uh, like all the others with tapered tang, um, massive scales, it's got a, a knot, it's, sta it's all stabilised, it's all very solid, uh, quite pretty knife actually. So those are the knives I've got.
Um, I'm experiencing some problems sending the knives. I managed to locate most of my po most of the post offices close to me are shut down now. I managed to send some knives out last week via uh, a courier. And it cost me three times as much to send them. Um, I found a post office with local which is open, and I inquired, and they said that yeah, they can do special deliveries still, but. Whereas it used to take one day, you get them there the next day, now they're saying it will take you a week. So uh, I'm going to be using that service for uh, for knives sent out to UK addresses. I'm unsure of how long it's going to take for the knives to make it to uh, the far flung corners of the globe. Like for example uh, North America and Australia. Um, so that's the update. Uh, I, I hope you can, uh, and well, I'm sure you can understand, you've got no choice, you've got to understand that from now on my, my wife and my family come first. Um, but I am going to be continuing with the knife making. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've, I want to make the most of my, uh, my time with my wife at the moment. Uh, and I'll be posting videos on this channel, knife making on this channel. I've got an interesting new design that I'm working on. Um, it's going to be a flat grind knife. I've got a name for it, but I've forgotten the name. My friend Richard told me. It. That's it. Name of the new knife. It's going to be called the Autodidactic. Uh, or the Autodidact. Uh, and if you want to know what that means, then look it up on Google. Basically, it will tell you how I learnt my skills as a knife maker. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this one. Uh, hope you're all um, doing well under this lockdown. It's difficult, but um, you know, just uh, enjoy the weather, make the most of it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.